100,000 subscribers. <laughs> Pretty incredible. It's a whole new order of magnitude. What the heck is an order of magnitude? It's basically a power of 10. That's pretty much what this video is gonna be about. Bear with me, it'll be a little bit more interesting than it sounds. Orders of magnitude include one, 10, 100, 1,000, and of course, 100,000 and beyond. Orders of magnitude have names. The first three are 10, 100, and 1,000. Then after that, every third order is named. So the first one after 100,000 would be a million. Unfortunately, there's no name for 100,000, so it would be just 100 kilo subscribers. Computer data is named in the same way. We have kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes, all using different orders of magnitude. But what orders of magnitude come after terabytes? Well, after that we have petabytes, which is 1,000 terabytes, not to be confused with pebibytes and tebibytes, where there are 1,024 tebibytes in a pebibyte. Everyone seems to mix up the decimal and binary prefixes. We're talking about the decimal prefixes, not the binary ones. So these are orders of 10, so 10, 1,000, not 1024. So get that straight before you start complaining. So how big is a petabyte? Well, imagine this. You have a one petabyte sized mp3 file at 128 kilobits per second, that mp3 file would run for just under 2,000 years. And to store one petabyte on DVDs, you would need a pile of DVDs that weighs over 8,000 pounds, that's about 3,600 kilograms. Now a petabyte is not an unimaginable amount of data. For example, if you're a movie studio that records lots and lots of raw video footage, it's totally reasonable that you might have a couple petabytes of video footage accumulated. And you're likely storing that amount of data for archiving on LTO tapes. Yes, tapes are still used for long-term storage, which can actually hold up to about six terabytes on a relatively inexpensive tape. But once you get to 1,000 petabytes, you're now in exabyte territory. That's one million terabytes. To give you an idea, Amazon is the biggest cloud storage company in the world, and they probably have around 100 data centers four to five million servers, and they don't exactly say how much data they can store, but it's probably on the order of exabytes. And if we assume hard drive capacity doubles around every 18 months, we might start to see the first exabyte hard drives around the year 2040. Imagine that, we'll look at a one terabyte hard drive at that time as we would a one megabyte hard drive right now. So an exabyte is huge, but what about a thousand exabytes? Well, that's a zettabyte, and that's one billion terabytes. In 2013, the total amount of data in the entire world was estimated to be about 4.4 zettabytes. Now, the amount of data total also doubles about every 18 months, so right now it's probably closer to about 10 zettabytes. And if you're waiting for a zettabyte-sized drive, you're gonna have to wait until the year about 2053. At that time, a one terabyte hard drive would be about the equivalent of a one kilobyte hard drive now. Absolutely useless. Okay, so if all the data in the world is in zettabytes, what comes next? Yottabytes. At 1,000 zettabytes, the yottabyte doesn't exactly exist yet, but we might expect to see the total amount of data ever reach yottabyte size, maybe in the 2020s. If you were to store a yottabyte on 200 gigabyte micro SD cards, the volume would be about 800,000 cubic meters, about one third the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And if Moore's Law continues, we might see a yottabyte size drive in the year 2070, but if you estimate the data doubles every two years instead of 18 months, it'll probably be even later. So unfortunately, most of us probably won't be able to see yottabyte size hard drives in our lifetime. However, if you really wanted one, you could probably create a RAID server to combine hard drives and get one long before that. So I just thought this would be a fun, appropriate topic to talk about for the occasion, and hopefully we'll get this channel to the next order of magnitude, one mega subscriber. So I hope you guys just enjoyed this video. You can let me know in the comments section what you thought, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you did. And thanks again, guys, for 100,000 subscribers. This is awesome. It's really exciting, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So if you want to check out some other videos on the right-hand side, you can just click them or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone or if you're new around here, you can subscribe. I make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. So thanks again, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you either in the comments or on Twitter as well. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.